Today we are doing function composition. It's a very important topic. We're going to do it from now on. The rest of your math career, you're going to see it constantly. Okay. Two different ways we can do function composition. This way right here, this is called, you would pronounce that as f of g of x. So when you see those parentheses, basically make it the word of. Okay. So it's f of g of x. Or it could be f open circle g of x. It looks like fog. It is not. When you see that open circle, think if there's an open circle, I got to plug something in for it. Okay. So that open circle is telling me that I'm plugging in. Uh, the other thing I always do is when I see that open circle, I just make it into a parenthesis because it's a better understanding of what's going on. It is f of g of x just like that. All right. So the main idea is we're taking something, we are plugging it into the other one and seeing what we get. So. We can do this with equations. They gave me four different equations here. We are going to do some function composition. So my first one says f of g of x. When we do function composition, we always start from the inside and work my way out. So what function would you say is the inside function here? g of x. Okay, we're starting with g of x. We are starting with this guy right here, x minus 2. All right, so there's a couple different ways of doing it. Whatever makes most sense in your brain, do it. Okay, but when I start off these problems, I always say, okay, Instead of g of x, instead of writing g of x, I'm going to write what g of x is, which is x minus 2. It's f of x minus 2. Normally, when we see f of something, what's normally inside the parentheses? An x. But it's no longer an x. This time, it is x minus 2. So what that means is I'm going to take my f equation, and everywhere that I have an x, I'm going to substitute in x minus 2. So my f of x equation, which normally would look like this, where there is an x right here, it's no longer going to be an x, in its place, I'm going to substitute in x minus 2. Okay, I'm taking this guy, I'm plugging it in for x and the other guy. That's my answer. I could simplify. What do I need to do if it says x minus 2 squared? You need to FOIL. Okay, so x minus 2 times x minus 2 you get x squared minus 4x plus 4. If you don't believe me, foil it. I got this minus 1 out here. I get x squared minus 4x plus 3. I have a plus 1 up here. I wondered why I was getting a different answer from earlier. It's a plus 1 up there. So this is definitely plus 5. Questions on the first one? Yes, ma'am. You, you could. In this case, it's pretty clear. But yes, writing f of g of x equals that is not a bad idea. If we were to do more than this, maybe. g, open circle, f of x. So remember the open circle. Don't let that bother you. Which function is on the inside? f of x. If you see that open circle, make that into a parenthesis. Oh, yeah, my inside function is f of x. Okay, so I'm starting with f of x. I'm starting with this guy. And I'm taking this whole thing. And I am plugging it in to the G equation. Okay, so in other words, I'm doing G of X squared plus 1. So I'm rewriting my G equation, but instead of the letter X, I'm plugging in what X needs to be, which in this case is my F function, X squared plus 1. So when I simplify, X squared minus 1. Everybody okay on two? Try three. Find g of g of x. Go. Here we go. We're doing g of g of x. Matthew, what's the inside function here? G of x is on the inside. And so it is g of, we can just substitute what, it, what g of x is, so x minus 2. So I'm taking my x minus 2, and where there was an x, I'm going to substitute in x minus 2. It gets kind of strange because you got the same function going into the same function. But my final answer is x minus 4. Questions with doing function composition there with equations. With equations, sometimes it's easier than... It's not that bad. Don't let it be harder than what it is. Okay, but just substituting in. You guys have done substitution before. Number 4. The difference here on number 4 is we don't have any x's anymore. Okay, on those first ones, we have X's. So in the end, we have an X in our answer. Okay, for these, we've got numbers. Okay, so when we look at example four, what would you say the inside function is? 
h of 9. And so we've got this inside function of h of 9. You know how to find h of 9. If I'm finding h of 9, it means I'm taking 9 and I'm plugging into my h of x equation. So I take the square root of 9. What is the square root of 9? It is just 3. Well, let's do a quick reminder of what this looks like. If there's already a square root sign, okay, they put the square root sign in there and I'm just taking the square root of 9. The answer to that is 3. That is different than if you're solving x squared equals 9. If I'm solving x squared equals 9, then I have to take I have to take the square root and it's x is equal to plus or minus 3. The answer what square rooted gets uh, what's the square root of 9? The answer is just 3. But if you're asking what squared could get you 9, the answer is plus or minus 3. It's the most annoying thing in math, but I'm reminding you again. Okay? So we did this part h of 9, that is 3, and then I'm taking that number that I got and I am substituting it into the equation in front of it, so we're plugging it into p. So if I plug it into P, I get 3 squared plus 1 over 2 times 3. I get 10 6, which is 5 thirds. Find F of F of negative 2 with your neighbor, and then show me with your finger when you get an answer. You guys are very good at showing me numbers. We've got X squared plus 1. It is negative 2 squared plus 1. That is 4 plus 1. It gets me 5. And then I'm taking 5 and I'm plugging it back into the same problem. 5 squared is 25 plus 1 is 26. Good there. Oh, let's turn it up a notch. Let's do G of F of H of 4. Find G of H of F of 4. G of F of H of 4. And then show me the fingers what you got when you get done. Good. We're doing well. G of eight, F of H of 4. We're going to start with H of 4. What is H of 4 going to get me? 2. That is 2. So then we're doing F of 2. If we do F of 2, then it's 2 squared plus 1, which 2 squared is 4 plus 1. It gets me 5. And then we're going to finish off by doing G of 5. That's 5 minus 2. So my answer is 3. Okay. I know I'm not showing my work perfectly there, but you can follow along with what's going on. Questions there? So the next thing we're doing is this thing. So let f and g be the function defined by this. Everything's the same. The only difference is this time I'm not giving you equations. I'm giving you a table. Again, this is really important for calculus. That's why I'm showing it to you now. Okay, the whole last two weeks in calc, this is exactly what we've done. Okay, so f of g of negative 1. Everything's the same. What's the inside function? g of negative 1. That's my inside. Okay, so I'm going to do f of whatever g of negative 1 is. So I'm going to my table. I'm going to where G is negative 1. When G is negative 1, my answer is negative 1. So I'm going to substitute in a negative 1 there. Now I'm doing F of negative 1. So now I'm doing F of negative 1. Oh, my answer is 0. It's exactly the same as before, only you don't have to do any math. You just got to be able to look at a table. Okay, try 8 and 9 with your neighbors. See what you get. So f of f of 0. Show me with your fingers. What would you find for f of f of 0? f of f of 0. Show me with your fingers. We're getting 3. Let's do it. f of 0 gets me 1. So that's this inside part. It got me 1. So then I'm doing f of 1. f of 1 gets me 3. So my answer is Three. Show me with your fingers. What did you get for G of F of G of zero? G of F of G of zero. We're getting one. Let's double check. G of zero. That's the inside function. G of zero is zero. So now I am doing F of zero. So if I'm doing F of zero, I'm looking at this. F at zero is one. And then I'm finishing off by doing G of one. If I go to G of one on my table, G at 1 is also 1. That's why my answer is 1. Tables are easy. They might be easier than the front side. Okay, let's flip it to the back side. On the back side, now we're looking at graphs. Again, I just said it a second ago, but I, I want to emphasize this concept. Here is what I'm doing today in calculus. Okay, they are doing function composition problems. Okay, you can see right here, h of h of h of h of x. Okay, 
Um, they're doing some multiplying with them too, but they're doing some compositions. And here's how they get to see it. This is what's on the AP exam. They get an equation, they get a table, they get a graph. Okay, they've got some things in here that you don't quite know yet, but it's still the same idea. Being able to understand how it works with a table and a graph and everything else is important because it's something that's going to be on your next AP calc or AP math class. That's a skill you need. That's why I'm showing it to you the way I am. Okay, let's do two problems here. Everything's the same. It's just a, a, a graph here. Let's find G of F of 2 and let's find F of F of G of 3. Find those two values using that graph. Talk with your neighbor, figure out what that would be. G of F of 2. Show me the fingers. What do you find for G of F of 2? G of F of 2 should get you 0. We're going to start off with F of 2, which gets you 3. And then we're doing G of 3, which gets me 0. F of F of G of 3. Show me the fingers. What did you get for that one? Well, that's not very fun. I made up problems, and they ended up giving me the same answer. G of 3 is 0. Then I'm doing F of 0, which is 4. And then I'm doing F of 4, which is... Did I do that wrong? Oh, F of 4. Thank you. F of 4 is 0. Questions with that? It's not too bad. Don't let it be harder than that. It's just a matter of working my way through it and understanding the process. Okay, here's what I want you to do. So now we're going to apply what we just learned. On this graph, we've got a graph right here of fuel economy and how fast you're going. Okay, so basically how fast you're going determines how many miles per gallon you get. And then here's another one that tells, talks about miles per gallon and how much it costs. Talk with your neighbor. Find these values and explain the meaning of the answers. Find the value. Explain the meaning. Okay, and then the last one, explain how we got that answer. Talk with each other. Come up with some answers. I'll give you a minute or two here, but I want you to think through what we just did. Go. Let's see what we got here on the first one. We are trying to explain the meaning of G of F of 65. Anybody want to take a shot on that explanation there? G of F of 65. Max, what you got for us? Good. When traveling 65 miles per hour. Okay, because we're doing G of F of 65. So we're taking 65 and we're plugging it into the F equation. Well, if you look right here, when you plug that in, it is telling you the miles per hour. Okay, so when we're traveling 65 miles per hour, then what, to finish what you said, Max, sorry. Um, that would be fast. You have to pay five cents per mile. You pay five cents per mile. Okay, because when we look at this table, we go to 65 miles per hour and I'm getting 25. So then I'm doing G of 25. We go to my table, 25. G, we're right there. Oh yeah, that's five cents per mile. Okay, you can see the units change there. So when you're traveling 65 miles per hour, you have to pay five cents per mile, basically. Cool. My second one says, we are trying to find G of F of 50. G of F of 50, we're trying to explain that one. Anybody got a concept here? Eli, what you got? Cool. You pay 3.75 cents per mile. All right, so let's look again. Again, we're plugging in to F. And so when we're plugging into F, it is telling me miles per hour. So we go to 50. We're going to F right there. Uh, looks like 32-ish on that first one, somewhere in that ballpark. So then we're doing G of 32. So he's going to 32. We're right there. Yeah, looks like just below 4. So 3.75. If you said 3.5 or what, something around there, you're perfectly good. Good. We're two for two. Last one says, if the owner of this car wishes to spend as little as possible on fuel, what is the best speed for her to drive? What is the best speed for her to drive here? Aaron, what do you think? 40 miles per hour. Miles per hour. How'd you come up with that? Um, because the highest F of X value is the lowest unit size. The highest F of X. That's as high as we could possibly go on F of X. The highest we could possibly go is at 40 miles per hour. Okay. And 40 miles per hour is the furthest over this graph goes in terms of that. So that's going to get us the lowest possible 
uh, value here. So 40 miles per hour because it's the thing that will give us the lowest output for G of X. Make sense on what we're doing there? Not too bad. Just some application of what we're doing. Last thing. For each function below, we are writing functions F and G such that F of G of X will get me H. So basically, this is the answer. H of X is that. What could F of X and G of X been? Then when I do a function composition of F of G of X, and you got to pay attention to the order there, of F of G of X, it will get me H. So it's got to get me this in the end. Thoughts on what we could make here. So we're trying to do F of G. What could I do on this first one? Sophia, what do you think? Uh, you can make F of X, X to the 50th. X to the 50th. And then G of X, X plus 1. X squared plus 1. So let's look. If we're doing F of G of X, Sophia would start with her inside function, which is X squared plus 1. And we would take that and plug it in for right there. Oh, yeah. X squared plus 1 to the 50th power. That is good. Is that the only function composition we could do here? No, we could do something different. And maybe you got to think outside the box here a little bit. Anybody got a different one we could do? Aaron, what do you think? X plus 1 to the 50th. So we took X squared. We're going to plug it in there. Yep, that will get me the same thing. Two completely different functions, but it still works the same. Make sense there? I'm going to come up with this one. I'm going to say g of x is equal to x squared plus 1 to the 50th, and f of x is x. Does that work? Yeah, but that's lame. Don't do that. Okay, you, you know, don't, don't do that. But we could. It's the same thing. Make sense? All right, next one. Same concept. We are trying to get 1 over x plus 1. You and your neighbor, try to come up with two different F and Gs here. That's going to get you one over X plus one. Talk to each other, but come up with two separate ones. Two. Abby, what'd you come up with for F and G? X plus one. That would work great. We'd take X plus one. We'd plug it in. Somebody got a different one than that. Aaron, what'd you get? All right, I like it. She took it in when we substitute in, we would simplify and get the same answer. Good. There's other ones we could do. We could do some lame ones there too, but that one's probably a little bit tougher than the first one to come up with different equations. Questions on something we did today?